Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLH 5th wheel. This is a front living room bath and a half 5th wheel. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV, and then at the end we'll show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are up inside the brand new 2023 Sabre 37 FLH fifth wall here. We're gonna start this video off in the front living room section here. So stepping up here to the front, you have big TV up here, some cabinets beside the TV on each side, quite a bit of counter space up here, cabinets down below and a couple drawers down below. You also have the electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. You can turn the heat part on with the lights or just have the light up fireplace on there. You have USB charger port and electric outlet on each side of the TV as well. Two opposing sofas here across from each other that are flip out beds. So as you can see in the picture popping up there, you could sleep four people up here fairly comfortably. All vinyl floor up here on your main subfloor. You do have a little bit of carpet around the edging of the slides and stuff there just to kind of finish it off. Theater seat looking straight at your TV area, reclines back, does have heat and massage and some little light up things on the bottom of it there. Looking down your ceiling line here, you have some AC ducts, a couple speakers here in the living room, and then the return for one of your ACs there. But a fairly spacious little living room area here. Now you'll notice as we're walking through, it's been a couple years since I've done this, so you might have seen my old video on this model. Uh, a lot of things have changed as far as flooring, countertops, wood colors, so quite a bit of difference in look compared to last year's version and the year before. Over here in our kitchen area, we have the Everchill refrigerator, so 12 volt refrigerator, freezer on bottom, fridge on top. You have the Greystone oven, pull out drawer down below, three drawers beside it, and then you have quite a bit of pantry space on the left. On the oven part, it's a three burner stovetop, flip down glass lid for extra counter space if you're not using the oven part. Light up knobs, has a glass stove door front, and it has a light in it. You also have your large microwave and some storage space around there as well. Couple overhead windows up there just to kind of let in some light. Looking up at your ceiling here, you got a couple of hang down pendant lights, 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version. Over here, we have a couple more, three more drawers it looks like. We got some extra cabinet and counter space here as well. Another electric outlet and USB charger ports. And then obviously you have some more higher counter space if you want to use it. High rise spring sprayer faucet, solid surface countertops here in the kitchen area. Looking down here, you have your uh, propane leak detector down below, and then you have three full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers and some storage space down below. Now on the side of the island here, you do have USB charger port and electric outlet, but you also have a Bluetooth connector uh, by Driven that connects to your speakers. And basically you would use your phone and an app on your phone to play music through the Bluetooth. It does not have an actual radio, so you do have to use another source for the actual music. Over here, you have your entry door, exit door, traditional screen door. Uh, it is the black glass entry door when you're outside looking at it. So from outside, it doesn't really look like it has a window, but it does actually have a window in it. And it is Lippert Thin Shade ready, so there's an aftermarket shade you can buy to go in there. A 
freestanding table and chairs here. Now the chairs do have a little bit of storage inside of there, so you can flip that up for some extra storage. It's not real deep, it's probably an inch and a half deep maybe. So you could put some little, you know, maybe some silverware type of stuff down in there as far as placemats and things like that, or, you know, grandkids coloring books or whatever you might have with you. Big windows here overlooking the campsite area, your awning side. Um, for the blinds in the living room and kitchen area here, you have these little roller zebra shades. Now in the bedroom, you're gonna have just night shades. So it's gonna be a little different of what's in your bedroom area. Now right here, we have a little half bath. Our master bath will be back behind the bedroom area you'll see here in a second. But we have foot flush toilet in here. You have a little sink area in here, and you do have some storage medicine cabinet area here. Vent fan up top, AC duct in here as well. And on your vent fan, you have an up and down button here, fan on off button, light switch button. So this is mostly a couple's coach with the occasional guest that might want to come with you. So the guests can sleep up on the sofas up there, come back here, use the half bath at night if they need to, and not have to go through your bedroom to get to the master bath. Over there, you got kind of a little cabinet area here as far as a couple electric outlets as well, USB charger ports again, and then some more storage space. Stepping back through this door, we are going into the bedroom area here. So bedroom wise, we have what they refer to as a camper king bed. So it's bigger than a queen, but not quite the size of a house king. Big window back there opens up. You'll notice the window has a little bit of a mirrored tent to it. They got kind of a copper tent to it. You'll maybe notice a little better when we get outside, uh, but that is also different from last year's version. Overhead cabinets, little corner nook tables there. Electric outlet, USB charger port on each side of the bed. And then this bed does actually raise up, so there is a decent amount of storage underneath of there as well. Spinning on around here, looking at the foot of the bed, you have four drawers on your left, three on the right. There's a heat duct down below. You'll notice the heat ducts coming through the cabinets instead of the subfloor. Decent amount of counter space, room up above the window there to mount you a nice size TV if you want. And then you got overhead cabinet space as well. There is the second AC up there on your ceiling here, and you also have a couple speakers in here. I'm just kind of spinning around looking at the other wall over there. You can kind of see Thermostat for your AC there, a little light switch area there. And then the huge bathroom for an RV right back here in the back. So looking over here, we have a window over here. It does open, decent amount of cabinet space and medicine cabinet space as well. Counter space area here. Some lower cabinet space, porcelain foot flush toilet. Some light switches, up and down vent fan for the roof fan, on off switch for that. On demand water heater controls right here. They're using the Furion on demand water heater currently. You can see the vent up there, which does again have the fan in it. You have skylight up above your shower. Another large section of medicine cabinet or whatever you want to use it for there. Dual vanity and some cabinet space down below. All vinyl floor in this area. For your shower area, you have the glassed in shower uh, ABS tub surround, does have a little sit down seat in there. But pretty decent size shower area. 
And then over here we have the big closet or stackable washer dryer area if you want to do that. There's a motion light in there. Removable shelves. There's also a hanging bar up there as well. But good size closet. And again, if you want to do the stack washer dryer or even you could do a combo washer dryer if you want. Um, it would fit right in here. You have your water lines, drain lines and stuff right there. Place for the electric outlets to go. All set up. And you also have some more cabinet space up top. So pretty decent area. Sliding door here to kind of give yourself some privacy in this area. All right, we're gonna walk outside here. I wanna show you around the outside real quick. Then we're gonna come back in and close this thing up. So stepping out's pretty nice and easy. You do have a quad entrance step. Let's get on back here so you can kind of see this a little bit better here. All right, so first things up on the outside, we have a white fiberglass exterior with a black metal skirting around the bottom section here and a lot of black trim work, some vinyl decals. Again, window-wise, changed up a little bit from last year. It's no longer a clear window. It does have kind of a copper tint to it. The slide-out awning, or I'm sorry, slide-out up there is pre-prepped for Solair slide toppers. So that is an aftermarket slide-out awning that rolls in and out with the awning you can purchase. Talk with your uh, salesperson about that, and it will go basically in and out with the slide room. The front slides are currently using the Schwinn Tech slide system, and your downstairs slides are more of a electric uh, rack and pinion slide system. Both are 12 volt systems, they just operate a little differently. The unit is currently using a four point auto level jack system. It is an electric jack system, so you have two jacks on the front with quick pull pins. And then you'll have two jacks behind the rear axles you'll see when we get back there. And basically, hit a button, again, 12 volt system, and it will auto level the RV. Now, it will auto level the RV assuming that you're not way out of Kelter. Um, you know, most campsites are fairly level and this should do good, but the jacks are only so long. So if you're too out of Kelter, you're not gonna be able to do that. Uh, but you do have 20 pound propane tank here. There's also another 20 pound propane tank on the other side. You'll see when we get over there. Some of the room control stuff, that little box there on the wall, some aluminum tube framing you can see there in the construction. And then you have electric outlet, cable outlet, and a light switch right here as well. Pet friendly leash latch holder right there. That quad entrance step by Moor Ride when we walked out there, you've seen. We have, again, adjustable feet for tilting, case of the terrain, so it kind of keeps it nice and level. It's rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step's only rated for 300. So heavier duty step. It's got a light kind of built in there so you can see what you're doing when you're walking in and out a little easier, but it also kind of lights up that engraved Sabre name in the step as well. That black glass entry door. You have the large folding entry handle there. And then you'll also see the model number located there. And a little sticker just reminding you, vacuum bonded aluminum studded sidewalls, foam block insulation. Coming on around to the middle section here, we have dual axles, currently riding on Goodyear Endurance tires aluminum wheels, easy lube hubs, 12 volt drum brakes. And it does have these little green caps on here. And these little green caps actually say like on this one, 80 PSI. And if it drops too low, it changes color. Uh, so it's not a real tire pressure monitoring system like it would be in your car, but that cap does actually change color. So when you're walking around out here and you see it maybe change to yellow or red, whatever color it changes to when it's too low, just kind of reminds you, hey, check your tire pressure, very important. You could see that rear auto level jack there. And then back here we have a 110 volt mini fridge. 
hot and cold sink area here. Little cabinet area here as well. And then just down below there is a gas line hookup if you wanted to plug in some sort of portable grill that you might bring with you. There's also one of your dump handles there as well. The awning on the RV is a power awning. You push a button, it goes in and out, 12 volt powered, has a light on each arm, um, adjustable arms for tilting and stuff like that in case of rain water and stuff. Obviously, if it gets too stormy, put it away. Um, these things can't handle a huge amount of wind on any of these RV awnings. Uh, and then if you get too much water on it, dumping at one time, it can't get it off fast enough and these aluminum type of arms and things could possibly bend and break. But overall, nice awnings. They're all very similar to each other in the RV industry. None of them are gonna hold up to a big heavy storm. So make sure you put it away. Very, very important in that scenario. On around to the rear end of the RV, you have a traditional flat back fiberglass rear end. Has a little hitch on the bottom down here, two inch hitch receiver. It's basically a bike rack or luggage rack. It is not meant to tow a boat or anything like that. It's rated for 300 pounds. So if you got a bicycle or something you wanna bring with you, one or two bikes, you'd probably be good. Up top there on the right corner, you see that black rectangle. That is prepping for the Lippert Stow and Go portable ladder you can buy aftermarket. It basically just hooks on right there so it can't slide off comes down, touches the ground, it telescopes down, and it's rated for 350 pounds instead of a 250 pound traditional mount on RV ladder. Um, nice, again, you can take that off, put it in your storage compartment. You don't have to worry about the grandkids or the campsite kids next to you or something climbing up there on accident, falling off, getting hurt. In the top center there is a rear observation camera. Now the Sabre comes with that camera as a standard feature. That camera is designed to connect to your smartphone to use your smartphone as the screen. Um, but the camera itself, standard currently on the Sabre, nice feature. Allows you to see what's going on behind you when you're driving down the road and also backing into your campsite. Detachable power cord right here. This is a 50 amp electric service system. Again, detachable. It's probably about a 25 or 30 foot power cord. Moving on up here a little further, we have the dump area, one of your dump areas. Again, you got two bathrooms. These things are kind of farther apart. So you're technically gonna have two dumps with the kitchen being in front of the axles and the bath back here being behind the axles. But dump area here, couple handles to pull. Again, slide out prepped for a slide topper. Squeeze in between here. So not much different in this area here. Kind of give you a quick view here. Up top there is the stove exhaust vent. You do have to make sure you open that before you really start cooking and trying to blow out any smoke. Looking right there in front of the axles is the second dump. Looking here a little further, you have hot and cold low point water drains. You can also see this is an enclosed underbelly unit. And then just here in the front is the fresh water tank drain and a dump hose holder tube under there. Popping up here on the other side of your pass through storage compartment, you have your little docking station area here. So you have gravity fill, fresh water tank, city water inlet, black tank flushes, winterization valves right here, hot and cold outside utility shower and cable inlets. Right here, we have the on-demand water heater and your furnace exhaust out right here as well. The other 20 pound propane tank, then you have your dual stage regulator here. You twist this to pick which bottle you wanna start off with, but it is an auto changeover regulator. 
Very, very important informational stickers. We're gonna step back here so we can look down the side. A little better here, get you an idea what it looks like. All right, now popping up on the first informational sticker here is your main production data sticker. This has production date, VIN number, axle sizes, but most importantly on this sticker, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined, don't exceed that number. Next, unloaded vehicle weight sticker, basically telling you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the assembly line. Next, cargo carrying capacity sticker, basically telling you how much weight you can load into the RV before you exceed the gross weight on the first sticker. And last but not least, tire sticker here, telling you tire size, but most importantly, cold tire pressure. Make sure again you check that, very, very important. Popping up a quick picture of the front fiberglass cap here. You can see some LED light strips in there, a fairly nicely rounded front end. It's not a traditional flat front end like the old school ones. Down below here, you have the light switch for those front lights. You have some jack control switches. Spare tire mounted up here in the front, so it's out of the weather and it's out of sight, out of mind. Much less likely to get stolen out of here versus hanging off the bottom of the RV. Room for a couple batteries right here. Your solar charge controller right here. Again, this has solar panel on the roof. You'll see the roof here in a minute. Uh, and then there is a battery disconnect switch back there. All right, now stepping back here, just kind of looking down the side again one more time, let's take a quick peek at the roof. So with the picture popping up here, you can see things up here as far as your air conditioners, uh, you know, plumbing stack vent, solar panel way up there, TV antenna, quite a few goodies on the roof. All of those things created holes in your roof. You got to get up there from time to time and inspect and maintain the seams and seals of your roof. Very, very important. All these RVs have things like that up there and you got to get up there and maintain them. So just keep that in mind. Remember to do that from time to time. All right, now let's walk inside here real quick. Going on up into your new Sabre fifth wheel to this lovely control panel. So right here we have digital voltmeter. We have the AC thermostat for up here, which also controls our propane furnace. Then we have our little brain box here. It's an LCI box that's basically going to control some of the stuff on the RV. Slides, some lights, awning, and leveling jacks. Monitor panels for our holding tanks, water pump switch, water heater on gas switch to basically turn the power on so you can control that Furion on-demand water heater control in the bathroom. Interior lights. Right now we're going to close up some slides. So we have to hit our slide button here. Brings us to that screen. We got bedroom, door side, kitchen, sofa, sofa. So looking up here at the front, see which one is which. All right, so we're bringing this one in here. Very, very important when closing these things up or opening them up, either one, make sure nothing's in the way. So when bringing it in, make sure your floor is clean. Obviously when taking it out, make sure you know there's nothing in the way as far as trees or electric poles or water poles at the campsite. So slide comes all the way in. Now we're gonna do the next one. Pretty quick and easy for the most part to bring these things in and out. Again, they are 12 volt powered. So when you plug in, that should power you up or you should have a good battery charged up on the RV, which will allow you to bring them in and out as well. All right, so you can see here, just kind of stepping up into the living room area I really needed to, I can kind of step over the edge of the theater seat and go right on up in there to maybe grab something out of the cabinet or drawer or something like that. So somewhat accessible. If you're stopping at a rest area or a parking lot or something just to run in and grab something out of. Now the next one is going to be 
the bedroom area back here. So we're gonna bring this in, Oop, wrong direction. So this is gonna come pretty much straight in, straight out. And again, very, very important to make sure that nothing is in the way on the floor or outside. Okay. So you can see when this mattress comes in, you can pop it up like I did here, or you can actually flip it and just leave it down. So depending on how you want to do it, it is a flip mattress style. Now with it flipped, I can just walk right on back into there, get to my bathroom or something if I want to. But that's kind of up to you how you do it. Do your own thing. That area is closed up. And coming on back to the living room area. We are going to run in, I'm sorry, the kitchen area. Run in the kitchen section here. Make sure all your cabinets and stuff are closed up, drawers are locked up, all that good stuff. Don't mess anything up. That ratchety noise is that slip gear in this type of slide out, basically just letting you know that it is all the way in. But you can see here, when it's closed, it is a fairly snug fit. And then, last but not least, we have the door side slide. And this again is gonna come in very, very snug to your island. All right, so you kind of get an idea here when I first walk in here and this thing's all closed up. I could get to my refrigerator and load some stuff in it. The freezer drawers, however, are not really gonna pull out. So if you are stopping at the grocery store or whatever, you're going to need to bump the slide out a little bit if you gotta put something in the freezer. But if you're just throwing some drinks in the fridge, it's not that big a deal. But with it's closed, you're not really getting to the back, unless you're leaping over this counter here. Takes just a few seconds again to run this thing right on back out, allowing you to get to the back or bump out the kitchen slide a little bit, allowing you to get to the half bath. If you're stopping at a rest area, you can bump out just that kitchen slide if you want. All right, folks, thanks again for taking the time to watch my RV videos. I really do appreciate it. Please be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. We'll definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV.